timing and time management are by far the two biggest challenges that I have on a project of this size. I want to make sure that that glue is completely cured before we take it out of this control environment that is my shop. So you'll see me stop whatever it is that I'm doing. I'll paint a little section here or there, give it a couple days to dry and do a bunch of electrical or whatever. And then I have to come back. I'll paint another section, do a little bit of cleanup here or there. And so it's just very difficult to juggle all of these different aspects of this trailer. But we're finally at a point where there is a finish line. We're not going to get everything done before we take its first trip. But we're going to be able to get enough done that we can see how usable this is and really get a taste of what needs to change in the future. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, we have doors. Check it out. These go up and down and little locky lock. I need to put the lights in, and by the way, you guys were 100% right. I forgot, I can't use ambers on the uh, rear door, so these are all gonna be red now. Thank you very much for pointing that out in the comments of the last video. This one, I wanted to mount struts on the inside, but I couldn't, I bought three different sizes and I couldn't get any of them to fit in there. So I figured out a way to mount them on the outside. It totally works, but it is a little bit uh, weird and unconventional. And because the uh, tent is gonna open up over this door, I made it to where it stops at like a 90 or so. This door is gonna go higher, but I'm still messing with it um, and moving the strut around so it'll go up just a little bit more. But we're making progress. Today's video is gonna be a lot different than the other videos you've seen in the series. And the fact that we're gonna do way less of this and we're gonna do way more of just driving this around and seeing how it performs. Does it wander down the street? Does it suck on bumps? I have no idea until we get it out there and we see how it performs. But before we get there, I need to install the electrical for the house setup, basically all of our camping doodads. And I know that some of you are gonna be curious on how I did this. So real quick, let's run through this. I'll hook all that stuff up and then we can get on the road and see how this performs. So we've got a seven pin connection that comes in and that's gonna go to our DC to DC charger. And traditionally that you wouldn't hook it up in that orientation. You'd have like a separate Anderson fitting. They would make it where you could maximize how fast you could charge the house battery off of the tow vehicle but because I have so many tow vehicles, I don't wanna do that. So I think this will work just fine, but we'll see. I'm gonna hook up uh, the, the positive wire from the seven pin connector into our DC to DC charger, throw a small fuse on it, make sure that you know we don't burn anything down. And I think that it should just slowly trickle charge. We'll see. We also are going to have a solar panel on the roof uh, of the rooftop tent, and I'd rather lean heavier on solar anyway than on the alternator. So then we have our battery that's gonna be getting charged from the DC to DC charger, and that goes to two separate switch panels. The one under the big door uh, controls the air compressor, our interior lights, which is one, two, three interior dome lights in the big space, and then it's a switch for the DC to DC charger to make it to where I can select between the solar panel or the uh, charge coming in from the truck, because if we're in a place where it's super sunny, like the desert, there's no reason to get any charge off the truck and vice versa. So then we also have this two switch panel in the kitchen area. This will control our water pump. We're gonna have like a little sprayer that's gonna go over here. And then there's a kitchen light that I installed that's gonna be in the same switch area. And on the bottom side of a rooftop tent in the future, I'm gonna add some strip lights that'll tie into that same thing. So I've got a lot of work to do. I need to throw everything in this. I need to get it connected as fast as possible so we can go to iCamper and we can install the tent on this thing. This video is not gonna be a detailed account on how to do 12 volt wiring or anything like that, but I've already done one in super fine detail that shows you exactly how to size your wire, when to use a relay, when to use a breaker, things like that. And I will link that at the end of the video for those of you that are curious. This video is all about getting things done and getting this on the trail. doing the wiring in something like this trailer where you've got a whole bunch of different systems that you need relays for, I would recommend getting a relay box because it just simplifies things so much. But in the interest of cost and in the interest of using a bunch of stuff that I already had, I just used a bunch of individual relays. So one for each system that needed it. And uh, you can see what the finished results are. I was able to mount it pretty clean, but it still can be even cleaner if you can funnel all these things into one relay box in instead of a series of individual relays.
when I was designing this articulating hitch, there was one thing I was not willing to compromise on, and that was this hitch needs to be able to marry to all of the different drop hitches that I already own. This is an industry standard single shear one inch connection that was traditionally used with a hitch ball that we're just gonna use a one inch bolt now, a really heavy duty grade eight one inch bolt. And since I can utilize all of the stuff that I already own and I'm utilizing something that is an industry standard, I don't have to reinvent the wheel and build a whole bunch of drop specific hitch connection points. So now that I've figured out the combination of parts and pieces that are gonna make this a level load, Let's hit the highway for the first time and see how this trailer does. I quadruple checked the lights right before I left because I want to make sure that everything is legal, no one rear ends us or any of that stuff. And it's not swinging anywhere. It completely just recenters as soon as I recenter. So, so far, that's looking pretty good. We're about to take our first turn here. Brakes feel fine, of course. The brakes on these Gladiators are really good anyway. And then uh, we upgraded with drilled and slotted power stop brakes uh, before we took our big trip uh, to Arizona to win a trailer. So this thing stops just fine. Plus, the transmission in these trucks is really good about engine braking. Like, it's really smart. As soon as I start to let off the throttle and start coming towards the stop sign, it'll engine brake to help you stop, which is really nice. And at the end of the day, this is not a heavy trailer anyway. So, woo, it'll still stop hot if it needs to. It's worth mentioning that I did throw some weight into this trailer um, just to partially simulate what it would be like if there was some weight in there. I put like, I've got a bunch of those like battery uh, inverter type of jammies, like the Jackery, and, and I put a bunch of that in there for some extra weight. And then I threw my fridge in there and whatnot. So just to kind of see how it's going to handle with a little bit of weight in it. A, empty, a completely empty trailer is going to perform weird, so I don't want it to start doing something strange that is going to be remedied by just having a rooftop tent on it and a full fridge. So we put a little bit of weight in there to try and guess, or to try to get an idea of how it's going to perform. Uh, once we put the rooftop tent on here, things are gonna change a little bit. Once we put the water cell in there and we have like 10, 15 gallons, I can't remember exactly how big it was, uh, but once we have all that water in there and it's all in the bottom, that's gonna change the way it performs. So right now things are good, but this is just how R&D works. You just slowly and incrementally test out whatever it is that you built. Before we hit the highway, I definitely wanna pull over real quick and do a quick bolt check. We've got a couple of miles of starting and stopping and turning, and I wanna shake the wheels, make sure the wheel bearings are okay, make sure that there's no loose lug nuts, make sure our hitch connection's okay. And once I gave it a quick uh, look over at the gas station, I decided that it was time to do probably the scariest part of this entire build, and that is drag it down the highway at 70 miles an hour. All right, we are doing about 70 and everything looks perfect back there. We hit a little bit of traffic for a second, but now we're back up to cruising speed. And the truck, I mean, it, it's, I've hauled little trailers like this with the truck before, it does great. Um, but the trailer itself, doing mint. I would highly, highly recommend putting shocks on your trailer. If you, even if you buy an aftermarket trailer, most of them don't come with shocks. Get some cheap shocks. I mean, obviously it's just like on your tow rig, the higher quality of the shock, the better performance, right? but any shock is better than no shock when it comes to a trailer because the stability is night and day compared to the small utility trailers I've towed in the past without shocks. Every time this thing hits a bump, it's just, just right back to level and right back to stable instantly. It's not doing one of these for a couple of seconds or it's not swaying back and forth. Everything is super smooth and super stable. So anyway, we're gonna go up to iCamper. We're gonna throw a tent on this bad boy and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna work on everything. There are a ton of different tent options out there. And when I talked to my wife about what tent should we put on the family camping trailer, there is one tent that she said that she wanted. I let her pick the options back here and she wanted an eye camper for one main reason and you're about to see why. Tent is mounted, things are set up. So to refresh everyone, we're gonna have little blocks. I'm gonna build some like six or eight inch blocks. So once we get to camp, we'll drive on those blocks to then lift this whole thing up. Cause the idea is I wanna have a natural cover to where whenever we're cooking in here, we're gonna be out of the weather because uh, weather is a big factor if you live in Washington state. But as you can see, 
Everything is ready to rock. The only thing that sucks, this is bigger than the original tent we made it for. And uh, I'm gonna have to slide this down like half an inch so we can slide the tent forward just a hair because it's just gonna look a lot better and uh, it won't be hanging off the back of the trailer. But again, this is what we're, we're here to test. So why does Mrs. Dirt Lifestyle like these tents better than the other ones? I'll show you right now. These are like pitch dark. It is insane how dark these tents are. The fabric is made to be super dark. And if you've ever been camping with your kids in the summertime, you know that when the sun comes up at 4.50, so do your kids. <laughs> so after a bunch of adventures together in a bunch of different tents, we've realized that the iCamper's fabric being so dark is a game changer if you wanna go family camping. Ready or not, this trailer's going to Montana in like seven hours. And I just had to rush so fast to finish this slide. These are 500 pound rated uh, slides that I got from Amazon. And the reason I went so heavy is if I have a, if I'm using a tow vehicle that has a fridge already in it, then I could like put a whole bunch of water in this or something and I still want it to be able to slide in and out easily. So. Obviously, I need to put some sort of a latch um, in order to keep it from coming out as you're driving, but <laughs> we're out of time. I got to get to Montana, and uh, I ended up putting the heavy-duty springs in, um, so it's a little bit taller, and I'm able to put more weight in there. So these are the springs that we fabbed the whole thing up with because these are a lot lighter, and I had a feeling, and my feelings were correct, that once we actually got the tent on here and all the different accessories in here and get a full load inside, that we were gonna need to throw some heavy duty springs in it. And I'm glad that I had that option available to me. So we'll see how this performs tomorrow on the way to Montana. If you're enjoying these videos and you wanna figure out a way to support the channel, we do have like merch and stuff. And we also have these fair leads. These are back in stock. They will ship ASAP if you order them right now. We uh, These are designed and built and manufactured everything right here in the United States of America in Idaho. So if you're interested in these at all, or if you haven't seen one of these before um, and you don't know what the deal is with Nate's Goofy Ferret Lead, I'll link a video explaining all about how this works and all the benefits and all the other stuff. So these are on our website if you're interested and there's multiple sizes too for the, those of you that have ATVs and stuff. You know, I need to talk to him about making some really little ones for like my RC cars and stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna go sleep for six hours and then turn it back on and we're gonna get started on the uh, off-road trip that we're gonna take at this with my whole family. See you then.